Welcome in. My name is Cindy and I blog over at DIYBeautify.com where I love sharing inexpensive ways for you to beautify your home, but also I love like budget-friendly gifts that are from the heart because who doesn't love a handmade gift, right? And today I'm going to show you how to make something that it may be a gift for yourself or it could be something that you're going to give to someone else and we'll talk about that in a minute specifics, but we're going to start with these um, super inexpensive composition books that you can buy everywhere. These are usually, you can get them sometimes for 50 cents. Generally, they're about a buck, maybe a buck 50, okay? And we're going to turn them into something like this. Isn't that pretty? A coordinating back. It's got this little metal label and um, label holder with the label. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to make these from start to finish, okay? And they're so inexpensive, you guys wouldn't even believe it. Obviously, you need to start with a composition book. And then the other thing, you want some scrapbook paper and you wanna pick a pad or some paper that you like at the store that's 12 by 12 because it's big enough we have a little extra to cut down and I love K and company they have these pads you can buy that have all these coordinating double-sided papers and so it's really easy <clears throat> to put together a couple papers that are gonna work for your notebook and I'm kind of going with florals today for this set that I'm making for my office. However, let's just talk about this for a minute and think about it because you might never have considered giving a custom notebook as a gift. We are coming up on graduation in just about a month or so. What about covering and making a custom notebook for a graduate that you know of? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, maybe this person is going into engineering. You could customize this notebook with graph paper or um, what are like a design? Look for some kind of um, archae or not archaeological. Uh, what's it called? I'm losing my mind. Okay, so a map or something to do with graphic design. There are papers out there. Just go to the scrapbook store, check them out. You'll be really impressed with what they have. So say you know someone who is going into engineering, you could find papers that relate to that. Maybe graph paper or, um, you know, design, building design, room design, those types of papers, architectural type ideas like that. Um, or just maybe you don't know. You could customize it with the colors. You could ask that person's mom what they like best. Maybe a plaid for a guy or, um, you know, school colors or a favorite teacher. You could pick something Apple related. I mean, there's the ideas and the um, creativity is just boundless. So hopefully I'm just tweaking your brain to think outside the box. Now, this could be used, I'm making notebooks, but what about journals? Who loves to journal? These lined papers are great for that. Um, I actually put together a sheet of these labels that I'm offering free for my subscribers and they are already pre-made to fit the little uh, old school metal labels that I'm going to share below as well. Okay, so they're all sized to fit right in um, this label holder. And I've got four different fonts showcased here, okay? Um, but what I've got here, journaling, so a journal, notes, recipes. Maybe you let, know someone who my mom always used to love to cut recipes out of magazines, etc. <clears throat> they could easily just, you know, include, you could include one of those tape runners so they could easily insert their recipes in here. Or what about a gratitude journal? 
Um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I struggle with negativity and I like to try to focus on gratitude, on my blessings, right? And I have been um, recording these in my phone, but it would be nice to be able to go back in a journal. Sorry, this one's not quite complete because we're going to work on that. I'm going to show you how I attach it. But as you can see, there's a gratitude label. And so this could be a gratitude book, just so you can record things that you're grateful for, your blessings, um, something to look back on when life gets rough. And you can say, hey, on April the 8th, 2024, I was thankful for this and this happened. And, you know, God showed up and did something really cool. So that's what we're working on today. I'm going to go ahead and switch everything around so that you can see exactly what I'm doing as I make over these composition books. Let's cover the supplies really, really quick. So the composition book and the paper we've already covered. Um, this is what you want to firmly adhere your paper to your composition book. Um, I like to use the foam brushes that are, I buy these in bulk on Amazon. Now, this paper that I'm using is kind of like a light cardstock. It's definitely thicker than your average printer paper, and that's not going to be a problem. Um, if you're using anything lighter than that, like you could totally use decoupage paper, which is also called rice paper, or um, napkins that have a pretty design, or we talked about like if you found an old map or something like that. The thing to keep in mind is if you're using anything thin that could possibly be see-through, you're gonna wanna give your notebook a couple of coats of white um, chalk paint just to take all this busyness down to a neutral surface. Otherwise, when you brush on your Mod Podge and attach your thin paper, this marbled stuff is going to show through and it's going to just ruin your whole book. So that's to keep in mind. And then the labels that I showed you, those metal labels, these are something that I bought on Amazon. They come in a bag of, I don't even know how many were in here because I've used some on my dresser. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think there's a set of 10 and they are cheap, like less than $6 cheap. Okay, now you will notice that they have little holes, right? So for instance, on my dresser, I don't know if you can see, but right back there, I've used the labels on there. And so I use the attach, um, attach screws to literally drill into and attach these label holders to my dresser. But obviously we don't have the space on a notebook to drill these screws in. So what I'm using instead, I'm gonna see if you can see these, are these little tiny brads. You all know what brads are. Paper brads um, are in every office, but these are tiny because they're intended for scrapbooking. I actually have a glass jar I keep filled with these types of things from back in my scrapbook days. So these ones, I'm pretty sure Tim Holtz or someone like that, if you go to the scrapbook store, you're going to find these. And I've tried to source some for you also. So those are going to just fill that little hole. It looks like we've, you know, drilled <laughs> this metal label holder right to the front of this book. It's just a really cool look. If you can't find anything like that, you could just use a little tiny button or even like a little piece of air dry clay that you roll into a ball and squish flat and then just paint it. Get some rub and buff that's sort of brass and that will uh, match the label holder. So then I also showed you the sheet of labels that I made and to turn them from, you know, just white to this more vintage or distressed style, I used um, distressed oxide in vintage photo and just a little sponge. 
like a blending tool. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And then to cut your paper, you can go old school and you can measure with a ruler and a pencil and then just cut it out with scissors. Or this is like really old, you guys, like from, gosh, my son is now 27 and I think I bought this when he was a baby and I started scrapbooking. It's just a paper trimmer. The beauty of it is that it will cut your paper on a straight line in just seconds. The downside of this particular one is it's old, like I said, and so the blades aren't really that sharp anymore, but that's a great way to go. You could also use like a cutting mat and an X-Acto knife. I've done that as well. Okay, I think that's about it. Let's get started and make some pretty notes. All right, so let's go ahead and prep our papers. For this notebook I'm going with some blue florals this time and I really liked this for the cover and then I think I'm just going to do these polka dots for the back so the easiest way to do this is just to take your notebook it has this binding which you can feel it has a little bit of a rim so I like to line it up and I always go a little bit bigger because I don't know what the deal is with my paper trimmer. Every time I've cut one and trying to be, you know, getting the size exact, it's slightly short. So I'm just going to mark it. There's that edge with a fold. Whoops. Got a little bit of slippage. And then I'm going to mark the bottom as well. Okay, now you can also do this <clears throat> with a pencil if you'd like. I'm just going to slide. Actually, this paper is 12 by 12 and my trimmer is 12 by 12, but this uh, band here, which attaches the paper into the notebook that it came from, makes it a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm gonna find my fold, and I know you can't see that, but I can feel it. And these paper trimmers have, mine is, like I told you, it's old, it's gunked up, but basically this is my line. I can put the pencil on it right here. So as you can see, I can push the edge of my paper against this gray band. I can see that this is my cutting line. So I just wanna make sure And I'm going to give it a little bit of extra. And then you just slide that across. Boom. Done. Just turn it sideways and feel for my uh, fold mark I made down here. That was right there. All right. Let's see how well we did. Not bad. Now, like I said, I prefer to make it a little bigger so that I can cut it down after if I need to. It's easier to do that than to make it too small. Let me show you with this one. I thought I cut this paper out perfectly. If you can see here, I had to patch it. Now, you really don't notice it, but obviously, if we can avoid that, it's better. Um, okay, so with the back piece. I'm just going to make a couple marks here for this paper based off of what I just cut. And, you know, of course now I can't see my mark. Where did I put? Oh, there it is. Huh. Ended up being wider than I was thinking it was. You see it right here? Okay. Let's cut this side down. Alright. Our papers are cut and let's move on. 
So I realized that my tripod that's holding my phone might have been a little too close for you to see exactly what I was doing. But <clears throat> as you can see, I've just cut that scrap of paper into two equal um, pieces that I measured and cut out with my paper trimmer to fit the front of this notebook. So the next step is to actually glue it down to our notebook. And that's where I'm going to use the Mod Podge. And you really, I've found after making two of these already that you do want to be generous with this stuff. Um, and I like using the matte Mod Podge because we're also going to use it on the outside of the paper to give our notebooks a finished look. And I just, I don't want to add, you know, shine to this project. So the matte Mod Podge does a really good job of just keeping it looking just right. You do want to make sure to really get a lot along the edges. With these foam brushes, you can get a lot of extra off by just tapping your brush like that. But as you can see, I'm being quite generous because I don't want these papers falling off. I want them to be secure. All right, and don't worry if you get any that bleeds over like that, we're going to be able to just um, fix that. So I'm gonna line my paper up right on that edge. Okay, and I do have a paper towel handy just to press and wipe any excess that oozes out. And then I just go across with my hands like so. It's so easy to make these um, and to customize them. I really like the options. Now, like I said, I made it a little bigger, so we're going to have some papers to trim off some around the edge, and that is fine. Let's do this other side really quick. actually just made my daughter, I'm in the process of making my daughter a recipe book for her wedding, and she asked for it to be handwritten, <laughs> otherwise I would have just printed everything out, but, um, you know, this type of a book, even though the pages are thinner, you could just glue in some recipe cards and make a custom recipe book. So that's another idea. All right, so I think I want it like that. Line it up on the edge. This one, wow, it's quite a bit bigger than the edge of the book. That's okay, that is okay. Oh, now see that? I wanna make sure that it lines up on this side too. It's okay, you got a minute with this Mod Podge before it starts to dry. And you can pull it off, manipulate it if you need to. Okay. Well, how's that? This is what I told you. They look like they're completely square but I probably should have measured this one with the book rather than with the other piece of paper. So I think the binding might be a little shorter on this side, but that's okay. We're gonna go with it. Okay. Now, I'm just gonna set my Mod Podge aside for a second going to get my cutting mat and grab my exacto knife. Hold on one sec. So we're 
just going to trim off this excess paper with an exacto knife which goes really quick you can see it just comes right up and you can use the end the edge of the notebook as a guide The Mod Podge does dry very quickly, even a thick coat like that, but um, yeah, see, I did miss a little bit on that side. That's okay. This is just going to be for me. It doesn't have to be perfect. But if you're trying to avoid that, then I would definitely um, line up your notebook paper along the back edge. Don't rely on it being the exact same size as the front edge to avoid having that happen to you and cutting your paper too small. All right, so just like that, we have a covered notebook. And I mean, obviously you could stop here if you wanted to, but we're gonna jazz these up a little bit. Before I do that, um, notice this is peeling off, it needs a little more glue. I highly recommend covering the outside of your paper with Mod Podge as well. What that does, let me just show you the difference here really quick between this one that I just did and this one that I covered earlier. This is just paper and it's going to easily tear and it's gonna get dusty. This one has just a really light sheen and it feels like the binding. See how the binding is a little bit shiny but not, you know, crazy shiny. It just finishes it off and gives it more of a professional finish. So that's what we're going to do with these um, covers. I'm just going to quickly add some Mod Podge. And you don't have to worry about trying to miss the black. You can even go right over the black because it's really, it's the same kind of a sheen as what we're giving the paper. So I'll just do a nice a little blob there. A thinner coat than what I did on the inside. Not, you know what I'm saying, to attach the book, the paper to the book. I used a little bit more Mod Podge than what I'm doing on the outside here. Now I'm gonna have to set this aside for a minute or so to dry before we do the other side. So we'll move on to the next step. So once you've done that and you have your, your um, paper has all been mud podged on the top and it's dry, it's time to add the label if you so choose. Now I've gone ahead with this one and cut out a gratitude label and I've gone ahead and I've used my distress oxide to give it a little bit of a vintage look and let me show you how easy it is to do. This is just ink and it is water, it's acid free, I do believe it will run if it gets wet and I just get a little bit on this sponge blender. I always start off of where I want it to use, where I'm going to use it, just in case I get a little too much. So that's it. You just, in seconds, can change the look and give it a bit of a vintage vibe, and then you go ahead and cut it out. 
Um, now, I'm going to use this high strength adhesive, even though I believe you could just use um, hot glue to attach this metal label to your book. So I've gone ahead and popped my brads into this label holder. And the little tips want to keep, I'm going to just bend them towards the middle. They're not holding anything. Like I said earlier, they're just really there for, for looks. And I'm going to get a little bit of this glue and put it along the edges. And you want to make sure there is a definite bottom to your label holder and a top where your paper will slide into. You want to make sure you put it down the correct way on your paper. So my other notebooks are drying right now in their different stages, but I just wanted to show you this one more time and remind you how simple and inexpensive it is to make um, a custom notebook, journal, recipe book, blessings book, gratitude book, whatever for yourself and for friends and family. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can check all the details below with a link to my blog post if you'd prefer to read a written um, tutorial and also links to the supplies that I used. Thanks a lot.